Hello and welcome to this video on SQL injection attack. Now, as developers, we all have heard about SQL injection. It's been there, it's been there for years, but people don't really care about it too much these days because we kind of assume that the technology that we're using cannot be penetrated by a SQL injection attack. But SQL injection is really a thing. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick demo of how easy it is to create an attack surface and exploit the SQL injection vulnerability to actually get access to the data, manipulate the data, and even worse, delete the data. And you could even take it a step further and delete tables, get into the schema, mine more information to actually physically get access to the infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure. You know, we're, we're all accustomed to this statement where the business needs access to certain data and Joe the developer thinks it's a fantastic idea to, to just knock up a web page on top of a table, creating uh, CRUD operations, which will then allow the user to simply get access to the data, query the data, um, you know, edit, modify, read, uh, add uh, data as they see fit. But again, that creates the, the attack surface area that I, I referred to before. So in this, te in this uh, test uh, setup, we're gonna have a web app we're gonna have a SQL database. They'll be connected to each other. And we're gonna allow for uh, the web app to accept SQL to then execute against the SQL instance and provide the results back on the web UI. What I'm gonna do next is walk you through the infrastructure setup and deploy the infrastructure using an ARM template so that you can then use the same template in your test environment uh, to try this out. All right, let's get right into the demo. Okay, so here I'm logged in into the Azure portal. I've um, created a deployment using a template that's already there, and I'll share the link for this template in the course. As you can see, there is a SQL injection attack prevention template, and this template creates um, some resources within Azure. So let's first go in and do the deployment of this template. So we'll start off by creating a new resource group. Let's call this resource group Okay, so we're creating a new resource group called AZWE to indicate that we're creating it in the West Europe region in dev test subscription for the purposes of SQL injection. We're gonna use this template. Let's select the location as West Europe. Let's set up a username password for our SQL instance. And then we're gonna to choose to set up And then we're gonna to choose to set up uh, email alerts for uh, SQL injection alerts on this specific email address. All right, let's implement this template. It's gonna take uh, a little bit of time for the um, template to fully provision all the resources. So I will let this provision for a little bit and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, we're back. So the resources are now provisioned. Let's navigate into the website. As you can see, Consoso Clinic is a website and it's got a few navigation tabs here. If I go into the Patients tab, I can see a, a data table that's rendering certain results. Now, if I'm the attacker and I come to this page, the first thing I would do is come into the search function and key in a single quote and click search. And right away, the error message that comes back is an exception, which is of type SQL and it's telling me unenclosed quotation mark after the character string, which is almost telling me that a SQL query is being formed from the search string that is being passed through the search box. All right, let's try to exploit that a little bit. So instead of passing um, a single quote, let's try single quote, double quote, single quote. And you see now the exception gets richer because I can see part of the query itself and it's telling me that there is incorrect syntax and I know that the the query is being built with an or and a like so let's start to exploit this a little bit further let's try an order by SSN voila and with a little bit of trial and error we can see that if we use the single quotes we're able to extend the query that's being built and pass another type of filter in there to order the results by SSN and we can take it a step further now and say order by SSN descending. 
and there, there you go, you know, it's starting to work. Uh, what about we change this from order by to add another clause in there and say where first name is like Kim. And as I, as I run this query, I can see that the results have been filtered down using the specific clause that I've built in the search. Now, you know, having established that we can pass um, the specific search criteria, how about we extend this a little bit further to figure out what is the name of the underlying table from which this data is being rendered? We could sort of do that by adding an OR clause and saying if one is equal to, and do a select. Now I'm taking a guess here by saying, adding a filter to say if one is equal to the count of values that come back from a table name. And that might not be the table name, but if it is, then it should bring back certain results. But in this case, it's telling me it's an invalid object name, so it implies that that's probably not the table name. But looking at the name of the page, you can almost guess that the name of the table could be patients. And as you run it, you can see that actually the name of the table is patients. So as an attacker, you've kind of come into this page, you've figured out that there is SQL being built from search, you have established that you can pass uh, certain criteria, and now you can get intrusive. You could start to delete content or amend content, and we're gonna play this out. We could take this a step forward and actually start deleting content. Now in this specific query, what I'm doing is I'm saying where the SSN number matches Kim's SSN number, I want to update the first name in the record to Taryn instead of Kim. And by running this query again, I can see that it's made the update of the first name from Kim to Taryn. Now you could take it if, even a step further and rather than run an update operation, you could decide to drop the complete table. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this case. Boom, the DBO patients table's gone. Now jokes aside, this could have been a real application. This could have been a banking system and I could have just done a balance transfer or this could be a HR system, and this could have been an employee table. I could have come in and modified the salary figures on my salary. Now, SQL injection is a real thing, and we should take all measures to prevent our solutions from being exploited on the surface with such vulnerabilities. Join me in the next video where I will show you a threat modeling tool which will help you identify known vulnerabilities in your solutions and show you measures on how to fix them.